we've had a proper laugh doing this show. Uh, thank you for sharing your stories with us and being part of this um, dysfunctional family. <laughs> like so many, though. Before we go, uh, we thought it would be nice to take a trip down memory lane. So here is the Steph's Pack Lunch story. <coughs> Welcome to Steph's Pack Lunch. Live from Leeds! Live from Leeds! Live from Leeds! <laughs> we heard that there uh, were beavers on the loose in Yorkshire, and I don't mean me getting a smear test on the show on Monday. <laughs> breathe, get your hands in. That's it! <laughs> breathe, breathe. <laughs> I've got, I've got my whiteboard and my pen out. It's interest on top of interest. The longer it takes you to pay something back, the more and more expensive it's going to get. He asked me intimate questions as to what my, myself and my girlfriend got up to in bed. And then within the next day, I was uh, discharged. Just got, like, <laughs> yeah, having to just hide who you are like yeah. that. We are all people. We're all one colour. I get a bit emotional listening to you, can we? Because, like, you're from my hometown and it's like, you're such an important... Sorry. <laughs> We want to make sure that the impact you've had on people is remembered forever. Can escape to exotic locations around the world, including here in Leeds. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you actually want to stay away from the pathway simply because of dogs like yourself, actually. Well, not yourself, but. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to get in? Oh, <laughs> this is nice, isn't it? <laughs> oh, my... If someone looks at my Instagram and they think, oh, yeah. And I'm at home, you know, looking like a potato. When you hit a certain age, when bits start drooping and falling off. You might need to see someone if it's fallen off, though. <laughs> <laughs> Time for them to remove their mask. Woo! Beware. Danger. I'm a pro, so it's OK. Yay! As we walk on by... Yours is getting a bit oh. salad. Oh. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Do anything you want, here. Ta da! <laughs> right, we better go before we see Alan's Johnson. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> so, all the people who come on the show, well, you know, ordinary people with extraordinary stories, these are the people who make it. What was on your ambulance? We've never taught him how to phone the emergency services. So when they told me afterwards what he'd done, yeah. I just couldn't believe it. I even like being able to turn on the TV and see it myself, like a black woman with a disability. Like, oh my God, like I can do anything in life, but because I didn't have that, I just felt, <sighs> yeah, my world is over, basically. John and Anne have been volunteering for a cancer charity based in Newcastle and I go to the house, beat the patient, put them in the ambulance, make sure they're comfortable, so they have their treatment and then take them home. What was it like for you being able to move the fingers of the bionic arm? Cool. Was it cool? Mm. Yeah. I have had a speech impediment ever since. Just even now when I talk about it, my husband has Parkinson's, I've reduced my hours to look after him more. I can't afford to lose money. You know, these people are evil. No, you don't have a piano. Do you think you could fit that one in? Yeah, of course. Do you want to take it home? <laughs> Got a, a weekend break, courtesy of Warner Hotel, so it's a three-night getaway. <laughs> 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 By you talking about it, you'll be helping so many people. And also, True. to help you, we're going to give you that money. So... <laughs> One in four women don't go for their cervical screening. So today, I'm going to be having my smear test live on air. You are both trying to stop this happening to other families, aren't you, by launching the smear campaign? I just wanted to try and do something positive 
that might be potentially meant another child didn't have to go through. Yeah. The thing that we often miss in TV is that we always hear from one disabled person. We hear one disabled voice. And actually, there's so many more types of disability other than a wheelchair user. And I think to be able to hear that in one show, I can't get over how powerful that is. After more than a million women in England didn't go for their breast screening last year, I'm going to do one live on air. Don't be afraid to, to brave the shave, you know. Get out there and be proud and hold your head up high. <laughs> one, yeah. two, three. We've got together around 40 people who are on a mission to get our mates, brothers, dads and partners all talking about their mental and physical health. This, this doesn't hurt, does it, Russell? It doesn't hurt, but it's just uncomfortable, the sensation of the manipulation. I'm not a fan of it. We are launching our brand new groundbreaking campaign called The Big Poo Review. Now, our plan is to do the largest survey of gut and bowel health in the UK. If we get to 100,000, I will get into a massive vat of jelly live on the show next week. Can anyone talk to me about poo? You talk to me about poo? Things have escalated. My team didn't think a vat of jelly was horrible enough. So, it's this. You're all right, you're all right. <laughs> Shall I read some comments? Shall I read some comments? <laughs> I'm not, I'm I know I knew I should read some comments. Save me, save me. OK, listen, we've had, we've got loads of lovely comments. Uh, so, Caroline on X, she says, uh, thank you for the laughs, information, diversity, empathy, a great team led by <laughs> Steph. <laughs> I get... <laughs> Exactly. Of course, we spoke like that. Um, <laughs> Keely on email says, uh, thank you to the show for discovering Alan Johnson is, in fact, a psychic medium <laughs> for correctly predicting the England versus Denmark game back in 2021. Niche reference, but we'll go with it. <laughs> um, we've got this lovely one on WhatsApp. It's Kay on WhatsApp says, Steph, you were, are and always be our crazy northerner. She has been our best mate, sister, daughter and crazy cow. <laughs> Messages. Now it's time for a sing song. Uh, who can forget Kate's brilliant song all about the show, written by the brilliant Kate Robbins. So she's back here to perform it again for you. Enjoy this, everyone. Kate! <laughs> We started off in lockdown from the lounge in Steph's gaff. She didn't like cameras in her loo, so we came to Leeds Dock for a laugh. <laughs> Steph became a daily staple, the lunch mates a daily need. <laughs> she even pretended she liked to cook, so Simon would give her a feed. Oh, it's Steph's packed lunch. It really packed a punch. Consumer news, cooking and health. Money experts giving us financial stealth. Oh, you'll miss our innuendos. John Waits flaps and his tight kicks. Which reminds me, Anna Richardson needs to give us advice on sex. <laughs> Russell Kane and Denise, naughty and funny. Luke Kemner went into the West End. Did he mention it at all? <laughs> the Pooh Review got signed by so many of you. She got gunged in the end. Oh, it's Steph's packed lunch. It really packed a punch. We're trying not to shed a tear. We love our formidable blonde right here. Oh, it's Steph's packed it's her last lunch. What an incredible bunch. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from the final Steph's Packed Lunch. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Um, I'm not going to 
to waffle on because I can't really say anything emotional without doing that, you know, that really ugly crying. <laughs> um, but thank you for watching. Thank you for everyone who's been on the show. I've loved it and I am glad you have too. That is all from us here in Leeds. Look after yourselves and goodbye. Come on, everyone! <laughs>